it's, it's, it's not like me playing the bass where everything's on 10 immediately. You know, I, I, I'm up to a good steady eight, I think, at this point. So there are still two notches of excitement to go. We'll watch you climb up to that 10 during the hour. <laughs> As wasps talking over you, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, turn it up. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, we're loosened up now, aren't we? So whenever you're ready to start, Alex, I guess, yeah, I'll yeah. just do a little introduction and I'll just explain that Alex and you are here and I'll introduce you. We'll launch yeah. straight in. With I'll, I'll mostly mute myself from, uh, from this. This is mostly you two. Now, you uh, should chime it. in from time to time, Alex. It's a nice yeah, dimension. Yeah. Oh, I think you should, definitely. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. He's the Roz to my Fraser. <laughs> nice well i in that case i hope i can be at least a halfway passable niles for this evening <laughs> what's the dog called what's that eddie. The name of the dog? Eddie. Eddie. Oh, yeah, i want to be eddie <laughs> i'm i mean i'm basically Ross. i should be the producer but there we go <laughs> A oh, Roz, yes, sorry. A Roz without the career. I'm just a slag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, so I have pressed record now. Oh, we, always, we always do that. We get the best, the most hilarious bouncing before we started. Oh, dear. <laughs> you, watch, <laughs> you watch the tedium now for an hour and a half. <laughs> if you hear any typing, you know, it's just me looking for sort of Brexit jokes or something. So that was half an hour. <laughs> Okay, well, I do what. Well, hello again, and welcome to the third Oral Delights of Hadar. And we've had a screaming success with the first two episodes, haven't we, Alex? Mm, we have indeed. <laughs> and so Alex is with us as normal. He's producing the show again. And this episode, we've got Tom. Welcome, Tom. Hello, Wasp. Lovely to be here. <laughs> And Tom is the previous bassist of Rights of Hadder. He's the only previous bassist we've had. We've had two. And he is one of the original members of Rights of Hadder. And he's joining us today for a podcast. So it's good to see you again, Tom. Thank you very much. No, lovely to be here. And hello to all you folks out there in Radio Land. I hope you're all having a <laughs> lovely day. No, it's jolly nice to catch up with you, with you folks again. Well, can you believe it, Tom? Our first podcast, our first Oral Delights of Hadda, got to number 26 in the Global Punk Podcast chart. Good grief. Well, I mean, to be honest, I mean, you know, the two of you are very charismatic. I'd imagine that you're a fantastic double-hander, and I dare say the punk audience is only reflecting my own opinion there. Double-hander means something else where I come from, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the kind of podcast we're aiming for. <laughs> No, I've got double entendres all the way, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> our second one got to number 47, was it? Mm, we're still in the top 50. Anyway, in the top 50. I mean, I think that says rather more about the state of punk podcasts yeah. in the world today <laughs> than it does of Oral Delights of Hadda. But still, we're chuffed as fuck with that. So... So, I'm pleased Tom, to hear it. I, if, I, I, can only, I can only hope that I don't end up dragging you down to sort of a number number 130 in the charts well, for next week. You've, or, you pre know. you've preempted my insult there, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a defence <laughs> mechanism, Wasp. <laughs> That's about to, I'm going to blame it on you if we don't hit the top 50 this time. <laughs> but, so let's kick off with a song, shall we? Let's so this, that. we'll start with Zounds. And this is a new song from the mighty anarcho-punk band Zounds. And writes, we were really chuffed and, I, I mean, honoured, actually, to play with Zounds just before the lockdown. It was an absolutely smashing gig. And this is their first new song in eight whole years. And it's called Off the Beach. <laughs> Hey, hey. Rocks in the hills and it's shaking 
get wrecked So that's that. What did you think, Tom? I'm very impressed. I mean, particularly with the uh, copping from the Beatles there at the end with the blisters on my fingers. It's apparently, <laughs> yeah. that's uh, what Ringo shouts at the end of Helter Skelter from the White Album. So hats off there. Mm. Yeah, they've no, got a good it's, stuff. It's being featured on a Canarian, like Grand Canaries, a Canarian noise attack compilation, compilation album. So that's, that's where they're, that's, where it's coming from and I'm just excited that they've um, released something new in eight years it's quite different from their normal sound actually I mm. think but um, I've been thoroughly enjoying listening to that since it was released a week or two weeks ago it's quite new it's very so, agreeable yeah. is, there, is there any reason it's on a Canarian uh, benefit release no I don't know I think they were just asked because they're pretty legendary I mean from what I can I'm only going on what I've read but that seems to be the the impression I've got from that so what sort of music are you bringing t tonight, Tom? Are you bringing stuff you've been listening to in lockdown, stuff you normally listen to, stuff that influenced your riffs for Rights of Hadda? What angle have you come from? Bit of all three, quite oh, honestly. Wow. Yeah. Well, I had no idea. I mean, given that I, I wasn't entirely familiar with the format of the show uh, when I accepted your kind invitation to appear. <laughs> so I assumed that it would be somewhat Desert Island discs-esque but I thought you know I'm going to save my Stravinsky and what have you for when Radio 4 actually phone up so <laughs> no I've got a number of different selections for you I think we'll kick off with the first one um this this one I've chosen um for any rights trivia hounds who might be listening because uh, when we were right. forming when, when we were first pulling the band together um we our initial name was uh, better than Hawkwind but obviously <laughs> we couldn't really get away with that not least because we'd get sued for even featuring Hawkwind on the gig posters and stuff <laughs> So I remember having seen this band, I went to go and see them at the Unicorn, um, and I thought they were great. Uh, they had a lovely one-word name, and I remember that this is where the name Rights came from, because I'd suggested that we were initially just called Rights. Yeah, that's so this, right. So this is actually from a uh, Hastings band uh, called Riddles, who you can barely find any trace of these days, because Jimmy Riddle, uh, their leader, actually deleted everything that they'd ever done from the internet and tried to wipe wow. them from the face of the earth after... They'd done a tour supporting Electric Wizard. Um, also, for trivia watchers, uh, Ryan from Gorilla was Riddle's original drummer, although he doesn't appear on this particular recording. But um, yeah, so this is uh, Riddle's psychedelic power engine Iron Claw Thunder Mistress. Enjoy! Fantastic! <laughs>
Bell. I fucking love that. Do you know what, Tom? All these years you've talked about riddles, and you you probably you know you know you told me about them a lot over the years. I've never listened to them, and if you you know if there's not anything on the internet, then there's nothing to find. And I kind of like that. Maybe I'll come back to that in a minute. But it's kind of like now I know why the early right stuff sounded like it did. <laughs> There you are, yeah. Plagiarism all the way. Oh dear, the secret is out. <laughs> but I loved it. And actually, I love, the f I really relate to the fact that that guy, Jimmy Riddle, has deleted everything. Because I feel like recording and making videos and stuff is a really cringesome process for me. For me, the gig is really where it's at, which is why the last few months have been really tough. And it's that happening. Do you know what I mean? And once that happening has happened, it's finished. I don't need to revisit it. I don't necessarily want to revisit it. So I can, I can really relate to being like, well, that's happened. Do you know? And if you were there, you were there and you got it. And if you weren't, well, fuck you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, yeah. I mean, they're, they're a great band. I really, really think that they, they had the potential to go far. I think it's just another one of those unfortunate instances where, you know, um, I don't know, personal demons and what have you probably came to the fore. But um, yeah, Riddles, they're um, Hastings' forgotten sons. And I really wish that more of their catalogue was still more readily available. They they released, I think, two singles um, through a label, which is the the reason that that track still exists and we can still listen to that. But um, it was, yeah, ho hopefully one day Jimmy will open up the archive and, um, you know... Give it to us, Jimmy. Sorry. Indeed, yeah. I spoke um, over you, though, which is one of the rules that we say. Not, you know, oh, that's all. That... I'm a rule breaker. <laughs> no, you are either. I've just realised I've inadvertently done it a bit myself, though. Yeah, that's fine. No, Jim, and, and you know, and Jim, Jimmy was one of the, the the loveliest, the most genuine people I met on the rock scene while I was um, still doing the rounds. So you know, Jimmy, if you're listening, probably very unlikely that you are, but if you are, hello, mate. Hope you're doing well. It's one of those songs, you know, that it's so intense and it's getting there and it's getting there and it's getting there and it takes you to this like plateau of intensity. But when it finishes, you feel like you do when you've finished having sex. Do you know what I mean? Just kind of like... Oh. I, I my, my opinion about, I mean, that's that's really where I think uh, the appeal of music lies, really. It's all about that that build up to that glorious release of tension. It's very, yeah. very, very um, sensual and somewhat erotic. And then, and then the post oral cigarette. Well, quite. <laughs> <laughs> or pipe, in my case, because I don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> but how do you follow that? You really, you mean, you know, your first, first track, you really put, set the bar quite high. I'm going to follow it with the astronauts and this will be the second time the astronauts have been on this podcast and that's only they're only the second band to be on the oral delights of had a podcast twice the first okay. being children but I had to put them on because they've released this track today and it's a charity it's a benefit track they're only charging a quid and it's on Bandcamp, so you can um, go and download it from there and chuck him a quid and it goes to the Trussell Trust and they provide food and support for those living in crisis. On a bus, on a lazy day, once you're blown away, raising supernatural. What the hell? Nothing much to do but to see you, but I say to you, listen. Hitting a 
Now, it's my belief that that is not quite a full astronaut's song. So maybe, I mean, I know them, so hopefully one of them will write to me and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But it's, it's Mark Astronaut alongside, and I've, the guy's name has escaped me, Andrew Stork, who I think, I believe, used to be an astronaut at one point. Um, but yeah, I think that's the most psychedelic I've heard, Mark Astronaut, since You're All Weird from 1999. So in terms of um, um, influences on Rites of Hadda, the astronauts have really influenced me. I don't know if you know them, Tom, do you, the astronauts? 
I don't, I'm afraid. I was going to ask if that was um, representative of their sound. It's not particularly representative of their overall sound, although they, they're really good at false endings. They're really good at 180 degree turns. And he's kind of one of the most ignored lyricists of the whole anarcho-punk movement of the late 70s and 80s. Mark Astronaut is um, he's a bit more cryptic and slightly more metaphorical and you know, and is more psychedelic and was kind of post-punk, pre-post-punk, you know. So um, given that the scene was really into a certain kind of punk, they got perhaps more ignored than they deserve to be. And they're one of the few bands that are still, you know, gigging now. I mean, the, the lineup's changed over the years, as, as, as it does. You know, I'm the only original member of Rights of Hadden now since you quit. But, um, yeah. Didn't you so, say... Uh... Didn't you say that we played with them at uh, our first ever gig? We did, we, our first, we did our first ever gig with Mark Astronaut, yeah. So they we supported them, perhaps, although they went on before us. I can't remember now. That was mm. a hazy gig. That was stressful and fucking hazy right, there right? at the Cowley Club. Yeah. Um, and we played with them. They also played at the Zounds gig, but that was a, a full band and a... But anyway, did you enjoy that, Tom, or was it terrible? I did. No, I was impressed. That was um, that was really. Uh, I mean, I know uh, prog or progressive is perhaps not the, the the fashionable term to use in punk circles, but I was impressed at how pro- uh, by how progressive that track was. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's done some really good progressive punk, if you want to call it that. I don't they exist. Like one song, "Kidnapped by Space Spaceman's twenty minutes long. I'll send you that, Tom. I think you'd love that one. Thank you very much. Anyway, it's probably time I stopped rambling about the astronauts <laughs> and we moved on to uh, another one from you, Tom. What have you got now? Okay, you know, well, um, try to do this as sequentially as possible. The first section of that song, uh, you know, <laughs> of, of which there were many, was was quite jangly. So <laughs> that being the tenuous segue that I have in mind, um, the next track I've picked out is uh, one that reminds me of playing darts with Matthias. Um, Again, folk who you know are listening, they might not know. Matthias is the drummer from Rights of Hadder, and both he and I are massive darts fans. We both enjoy a game of darts. And um, I spent a few years living in a warehouse where we had a dartboard uh, with a radio set up by it, where we would uh, we would throw darts and listen to um, Mark Riley on Six Music. And this was a tune that um, came through on there, and it's one that's sort of stuck with me, and I thought it added a nice dash of colour to proceedings. It's also only about two and a half minutes, too, so if you hate it, you haven't got long to wait. But this is a band from Manchester whose name I don't quite know how to pronounce. It's either the Bodines or the Bodines. I've never heard Mm -hmm. it said. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this is a song called Clear which, incidentally, we haven't cleared the rights for. It's a Peel session recording, but <laughs> we're having it all the same. Maestro, take it away. <laughs> and someone said it's stupid Making promises Stupid lying to yourself Cos when your peanuts fall You show yourself The sun shines relentless On the stage your mother never Met your eyes Questions be the death of me As 
So that was the Bowdines, and you know, as much as I'd like to imagine the cries of 180 ringing in my ears, that would be, I would be lying if I claimed that that was the situation when I first heard that song. But nevertheless, um, a song that I very much enjoyed. Um, yeah, what, was, what, what did you reckon? Well, I was pleased it was two and a half minutes long. <laughs> I mean, Tom said to me before we came on air, if you don't like any of my songs tonight, don't be afraid to tell me. It makes a good, you know, airtime. But you know what? I didn't like that one. <laughs> I'm quite good with music. I like a lot of things. But that's that man, that Manchester sound of that era is not one that I really relate to. I have to say, it doesn't. He hasn't got the balls big enough for me. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's I like a bit of cut and thrust. I like it quite hard and fast and you know, <laughs> a big set of balls. And, it's like, and that is was none of that. Do you know I can I could, I could appreciate it on a um, on a on a certain no, no, that's, level that's, that's, on a but you know for on personal taste it is not really what I would. I, I had a feeling that would be the case. No, I mean, it's kind of funny. I, I was never really into the Manchester stuff growing up, but it's something that kind of really took a hold of me in my kind of late 20s, early 30s. And it is something that's kind of influenced a lot of uh, my composition. So there is probably yeah. actually hidden Manchester stuff, de- uh, you know, encoded in the existing rights of had material, which you've not spotted yet. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, now I hope maybe I will spot it. And I... <laughs> but I know that that's true, actually, of the the sort of creativity around the early rights of Hadda stuff was, because you're quite into the, that surf sound as well, aren't you? And I Very much so. I hate that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really hate that. And again, for the same reasons, although that's faster, you know, I can appreciate the speed of that, but the balls aren't big enough. It's like, come on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw Alex into the conversation here. Yeah, Alex, yeah, yeah. He's having to a go at surf rock. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty oh. much. Well, yeah, when we were in high value products, like it was kind of, Tom was listening to the Manchester stuff and we were listening to a lot of uh, like early garage stuff and surf stuff. And we're basically like the, the only image we had in our mind was how can we make these things into hardcore punk, basically. So Tom would come with like an idea and be like, oh, God, you've been listening to Stone Roses again, haven't you? Yeah. OK, <laughs> speed it up and put a blast beat on it. It'll work. <laughs> well, I'm pleased you saved that for high value products. <laughs> High Value Product oh, didn't want it either. I remember that bringing, <laughs> that bringing that song to a band practice and playing it to them and saying, Darrow, would you mind playing the bongos on this one? You know, <laughs> and, 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 like, not screaming. So, well, for people listening, home. High Value Product was, like, a, a band that Tom and Alex were in, as well as Rights of Hadda and another band before them. Indeed, and it would be yeah, re- remiss of me while on air not to plug them assiduously. So, yeah, yeah. we, we, and, we and recorded an album... Former- don't forget there was a former writer who had a drummer in there as well. There was, was there, uh, right? one of one of many uh, rights drummers was uh, Bert, who's now residing out in the provinces of Canada. But yeah, no. So just to say, if you would like to hear um, some of Alex and my early work, high value product on Bandcamp. <laughs> uh, we have an album on there called Dirt Nav, which we didn't manage to release because we broke up before we finished mixing it. But it exists. Well, there you go. So yeah, look up high value product, and I, th- I think Alex is still selling T-shirts. If you want one, anyone. <laughs> Giving them away. Get in touch with Alex. I'm using him as bog roll during lockdown. <laughs> Do you need Shooting a new attractive dish cloth? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's move on, shall we? Now we've plugged high value product. Let's do that. And um, I'm going to, yeah, let's move on to King Woman. And this is a band, you know, I actually just, a, a friend of a friend introduced me to them and I just listened to their stuff on YouTube. I don't really know what order their albums came in or the tracks on their albums. I just let the YouTube roll. But this is my favourite song of theirs and it's called Burn.
What did you think of that, Tom? I loved it. Uh, female vocals are usually a plus point for me, and female vocal stoner rock is absolutely delightful. Yeah. Um, it reminded me a lot of, I don't know whether you've heard of this band, um, Aluna, but there's a band from no. Birmingham who sound quite similar to that, who would be well no. worth you checking out if you're into that. But no, Yeah, no I'll stuff. definitely check them out. I love that. King Women, they're just excellent. I wasn't sure whether that was stoner or doom. I get a bit confused around these kind of genres, you know, so you've placed it for me there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know I like listening to that when I'm really stoned. But in, if I take my life as an example, all music is stoner. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, so, you're, you're, you're not alone in that particular <laughs> in that particular reflection. <laughs> it's good to get that placed as well. Uh, what no, have you got next? Generally speaking, Doom is boring. Doom uh-huh. is one riff and a bloke going, Ugh, whereas uh-huh. Stoner is anything that's bouncy, it's got a bit of life to it. And I think, uh, generally speaking, most stuff with a female vocal, I would class as Stoner because I tend to see it as a, a better term. But yeah. yeah. Well, okay. happily, that song being so st- quintessentially Stoner rock, that leads us nicely uh, with a segue <laughs> to my next song. So this is another forgotten band. I've decided to spotlight a couple of bands who've completely disappeared here. This band um, are called Throne. Um, They're a London-based band, and I first encountered them uh, at a Metal Hammer, uh, I think it was Hammerfest in uh, in Wales, uh, where I went with uh, with my ex. And um, before I'd gone there, I'd uh, been been supplied with um, some quite nice uh, something something quite nice that one could smoke. And I'd had I'd, I'd, I'd had uh, one stick of uh, that that nice something that one could smoke, and then wandered back into the venue, and I was absolutely blown away by this band because they. I was singing along with them from from um, you know before I even knew any of their songs. Uh, yeah, they're they're a band that kind of disappeared. Unfortunately, they had a little bit of notoriety because their guitarist and singer was uh, a videographer, and he actually made uh, a music video that was all animated out of denim patches, uh, which is worth looking for on YouTube. But this is not that song. This is my favourite of their songs, and it has the sing along chorus. This is um, "Surface of Stone" by Throne. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, 
that was a right head banger. I'm glad you approve. How did you you think of that? Yeah, I loved it. It was really good. It was banging from start to end. They were amazing. They really were thrown. I mean, it was you know the ingredients are so simple, but the uh, the product itself is so effective. And it's such a shame that they um, didn't last the long term. Uh, they, yeah. After they'd made that um, animated denim patches video that I mentioned, they went on one tour of Europe and then just inexplicably broke up. We never heard anything more about it. They just said, you know, we, this, once our t-shirts are sold out, that's it. We're never restocking, and they've all disappeared. Um, I know that there's at least one more song of theirs that was recorded, um, which is annoying because it's not been released. But um, uh-huh. yeah, they're, they're, they're another band like Riddles that I really hope, that, you know, um, in, in my own small way in, in doing this, I hope I can shed a bit more light on. But yeah, glad you enjoyed the song. Yeah, no, thanks for bringing that. I mean, I have to say to follow that now, I'm going to swerve dangerously out of lane here. And, and the, there is a point in the show... <laughs> Where I take a, a right angle. <laughs> oh, well, I, I thought you were going to say we were going to pause at the top of the hour for the news or something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got no news, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> what I've got is Margarita Prakatan and I Will Survive.
Victoria again eat your heart out, so. I mean, I just love Margarita Pragatan. I don't know if you know her. Do you remember her from the 90s, from Clive James, the Clive James show? Not so that I do, I'm afraid. Well, she um, recently died. That's why I brought her. She'd made it to like 89 or 93 or an age like that. But in the 90s, she was on the Clive James show. And I think she'd previously be, been on the television in the States. And she, her whole shtick was doing terrible cover, cover versions of classics and doing them with just such charm and excellence and she was she became a really big thing for lgbt people and i ended up seeing her live maybe three or four times <laughs> um, <laughs> in the late 90s and just because she was at that point in history you know it was there was a lot of people coming out for the first time and she was there doing her thing with people ridiculing her laughing at her and she didn't give a shit and that was highly symbolic you know at the time and she became very popular amongst lgbt people and she was really camp as well i mean she dressed like a drag queen so it was it all conspired and really worked for her and she died recently i'm not really into celebrating celebrity deaths or anything like that but i thought you know he she was an icon of a moment and you know i just wanted to give her a nod well that's yeah. fantastic I'm, I'm pleased to be exposed to it i mean to be honest i wouldn't call that a really bad cover version that's i would quite happily imagine myself on some tiki bar with a white russian in hand <laughs> chatting away maybe a floral garland around the neck i can see that working <laughs> in the background so no that was that was delightful yeah. well thanks for allowing me that not at all. Well, I, I, I tell you, I mean, Ross, we, we, we seem to be matching one another song for song at the moment because I have uh -huh. another world music tinge selection and another uh -huh. which features an artist who's actually died recently, unfortunately. Uh -huh. So, coincidence. My, indeed. Coincidence, Tom. Well, yeah. I mean, well, let's hope the listeners believe that, eh? <laughs> So uh, yeah, no. My my next selection. I have I had no idea um, who this chap was. This is uh, a wonderful um, kind of happy coincidence that has been brought about by YouTube's algorithm. Um, so I I put this album on um, a few days ago and was absolutely bowled over. And I've listened to it I think every day since. Um, this is actually the title track of this record. Uh, this is by uh, a guy called Manu Dibango, who uh, apparently suddenly died recently. But um, I mean, this is a phenomenal track. The whole album is well worth listening to. So if you enjoy this, you will enjoy the whole thing. Uh, this is Soul Makosa. Great.
Again, that that sort of conjures images of by the pool, you know, like in a in a kind of grass skirt, <laughs> sort of stepping around with a sex on the beach. Do you know what I mean? There's there's a part of me that would love to have lived in Los Angeles during the 1970s and been able to walk around in an orange shirt with a moustache and a side parting and a glass in hand and maybe a chest cigarette. rug. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> medallion. Smothered yeah. in aqua velva, yeah. <laughs> but no, that, that's that's a lovely little tune. I mean, I I, I really really like that album. I mean, uh, yeah. What what did you make of it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. I wouldn't necessarily. I don't think I'd listen to it at home, perhaps. But if I was out and about round a pool with a cocktail, and you know, like, I'd be quite happy with that. There you and are. frankly. I'll take it at home, given we've been locked up for three months. <laughs> Indeed. Well, that's the thing. You know, just, just grab your Hawaiian shirt from the wardrobe. And <laughs> grab yourself some vodka, Kahlua and milk, you know. Yeah, fill up the bath. <laughs> Soy <Soya> milk. <laughs> Sorry, there was words from the producer there. What does... <laughs> I said fill up the bath, you know. Fill up the <laughs> bath. Stand Not fill up... on the bathroom floor. Pretend you're in a pool and sit in the bath. <laughs> I'm sometimes in a pool, but, you know, like... <laughs> Of my own shit, probably, rather than the, <laughs> anything else recently. But we can probably edit that joke out, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can keep it in since you said that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I, I not, acknowledgement on the recording means it probably needs to stay in, quite frankly. <laughs> I'm mean, just w- wondering uh, after that track, Tom, that our, our charting in the punk podcast worldwide chart this this time might be less might be a little well, I have to I have to say I mean if if if, if people are expecting a non-stop blast of three chord songs with word anarchy in them over and over again I think they've misunderstood what <laughs> punk is all about Ah uh, yeah I'm with you there I'm certainly with you there Touche. It's interesting it's an interesting concept hey punk yeah, amorphous, slightly it's, meaningless if you inquire too closely. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah it's because it's both one specific thing and nothing at all. I, I'm a drawn to those kind of concepts, actually. What really intrigues me at the moment is, you know, people sort of um, saying, oh, it's, you know, it's really punk to, like, vote for Trump and it's really punk to be conservative yeah. and what have you, you know. It yeah. um, makes me think that you could apply the term to pretty much anything you want. I mean, that that and Brewdog with co-opting it and indeed trying to trademark the term. <laughs> True, yeah. Well, I'm going to... Pl- I've got a song now from someone who I think, em- employing the broader definition of punk is one of the first punks and that's Nina Simone and it's kind of topical at the moment because of the Black Lives Matter um, stuff that's going down I just wanted to play this version of Mississippi Goddamn and it's on YouTube and it's just a fucking intense song but also her performance and what she does at the end is like the, the most punkest thing ever she's just you know she's she's there so this is Nina Simone and Mississippi Goddamn some request for Alabama's got me so upset Tennessee made me lose my rest and everybody knows about Mississippi God damn Alabama's got me so upset Tennessee made me lose my rest everybody knows about Mississippi Stand the pressure much longer Somebody say a prayer Alabama's got me so upset And Governor Wallace has made me lose my rest Everybody knows about Mississippi Goddamn Hound dogs on my trail 
school children sitting in jail. Black cat crossed my path, I think every day is gonna be my last. Lord have mercy on the land of mine, we all gonna get it in due time. I don't belong here, I don't belong there. I've even stopped believing in prayer. Don't tell me, I'll tell you. Me and my people just about do. I've been there, so I know they keep on saying, go slow. That's just the trouble. Too slow. Washing the windows. Too slow. Picking the cotton. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about that, really. I mean, it's such a good performance of such an epic song, and she's just, she's just, uh, that at the end where she's just like, that's it, and slams the, you, you know, the fingers down on the piano, and on the video, obviously, the people can't see if they're listening, she just stands up, and you know, that's it, you know, and it's just the punkest thing you'll ever see. I just think, yeah, good for her, you know, and all this stuff, that's happening is well overdue and you know and black lives matter is a white problem it's not actually a black problem and it's time that um we all stand up and say enough is enough and you know let's move forward together yeah i really like the um that truck reminded me a lot of um chuck berry's downbound train as well you know it got that kind of uh, that that sort of train rhythm that you don't really hear that much these days so yeah i love that There's double bass <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yeah. you know that pounding double bass is just yeah amazing so what have you got for us, Tom? How many songs have you got left? Well, that's the thing. I'd, I'd initially chosen six. I did um, ask Alex if I could sub in a seventh, so I don't know whether I should replace or uh, or, or whether we've got time for all three. No, um, it's sub in a seventh. Do you know why? Because we always say six, I always bring eight. Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yes. That, and then... That- and then I'm dominant, you know, like, you know, so it's kind of like... Got to have the last word, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, given that's the case, um, and given uh, you were highlighting Nina Simone's punk credentials beforehand, I think we'll go for uh, an out, 
an out, a, 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 um, a decidedly punk selection for my next one. So I've chosen this song uh, because I wanted to kind of pay tribute to the fact that uh, Alex, Matthias and myself were all once part of an oi band. Uh, we were part of a, an oi five piece called Oyster Men, whose uh, first album, uh, or our first and indeed only album, Beer Bukaki, uh, is probably still available from Horn and Hoof Records. They've no <laughs> doubt got a warehouse full of them because they've not shifted. Um, but I didn't want to play any of our songs because I thought that'd be pretty cheesy. So I uh, decided to uh, pick out a band called Pints, who were around on the punk scene at about the same time as we were in Oyster Men. And uh, the parallels between the two bands really amused me because we were all, uh, we were both five pieces. And uh, being as I was the the fat one with the long hair who played the bass and who wanted to be playing lead, uh, the guy whose name was Maggot uh, in Pints was exactly the same. He was the only fat one, the only one with long hair, and the guy who played the bass and wanted to play lead. Uh, I also wanted to I picked out this song because I heard it relatively recently and it's got one of the funniest choruses I've ever heard in my life. Uh, so this is the Pride of Essex. This is Pints with Yay. You Are Shit. <laughs> obnoxious enough for any uh, punk listeners who are looking for a bit of a three-chord stormer there. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Pints are always good. Yeah, that Very was really fun. good fun. I enjoyed that. I've got a it. punk song. It's funny you say we're kind of mirroring each other because I've kind of moved into the punk section now of my well, choices. There's, there's a reason that you and I worked together for six or seven long years in establishing rights. You know, they there were, were long there, years, were they, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I mean to say it's not entirely a surprise that you and I are mirroring one another, I think, in musical selection. Uh, but go ahead. What have you got next? Yesterday I was panicking. I didn't have enough songs. And obviously today I've turned up with too many songs. But, um, you know, it's good. I think it, I'd like to include it anyway because I listened to it. I enjoyed it. And it's been released and it, recently in the last week or so. And, um, you know, at this, when the first episode, we had quite a lot of new releases. And as the, as the weeks wear on, <laughs> we're getting less and less. So this is a new one. So it's got in on those credentials as well as enjoying it. <laughs> and it's from Slow Faction, who are a South London punk band. And yeah, so this is, it's following on the same theme, really. It's Slow Faction and Empire. Say they 
for them civilization, rule of law and education. Enrich themselves through exploitation, dissension and with incarceration. The rounded up the men, the women and children, put them in a camp called labor and freedom. Brought them on the wheel, then they killed them. Torture, rape, mass execution tonight. You wave the union flag and celebrate the past. The way to glory, how many deaths are we men of the So now, the sun's finally set. Now there's nothing left. Just a whitewash history. If you want to move forward, then you gotta let go of life. Before you realize. A banquet held in celebration. Gratitude, glorification. Time to pay thanks to the ruling nation. For millions died from deliberate starvation. Don't blame nature, this famine was man made. There was no shortage, they stole the grain. Bring it up to shit, then they said so. They're just cargo, they call it free trade tonight. You ain't the union flag, and celebrate the past. The way to glory, how many deaths are you meant to forget? So now, the sun is finally set. Now there's nothing left. Just a whitewash history If you want to move forward Then you gotta let go of life Before you realize Africa, India and Ireland, the Caribbean and the Transvaal, China, Malaysia, Pakistan, the beloved empire, so these lands, lack of victory, the bottom pass, exceptionalism can never last, the land we hate, folks, split the nation, country hell bent on self-destruction tonight, the way the union flag, and celebrate the past. For where's the glory? How many deaths are you meant to forget? So now, the sun is finally set. Now there's nothing left. Just a whitewash in the street. If you want to move forward, then you've got to let go of life before you realize. Tonight, you wake the union flag and celebrate the past. For where's the glory? How many deaths are you meant to forget? So now. The sun is finally set Now there's nothing left Just a whitewashing tree If you want to move forward Then you gotta let go of life Before you realize Before, before you realize Before, before you realize Yeah, did you enjoy that, Tom? I did indeed <laughs> I like that kind of from that that South London, that band, band of South London punks that are um, completely fucking solid and have got really good um, back catalogue out. Do you mean the South London Punk Collective? Who yeah, I it do, may yeah. well be opportune for us to give a shout out to. Well, I say opportune for us. I mean opportune for you too. <laughs> <laughs> You'll benefit from any royalty sales in the long term, Tom. I am banking on the back catalogue being an enormous unit shifter in years to come. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks for that slow faction and that people can find that on Bandcamp, I think, Alex, can't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I believe, just a demo of uh, a um, release that will be out eventually uh-huh. when people can, like, touch and hang out with each other again. So get ready to touch that one, listeners. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got one last song then, Tom, or you've got two No, more? I haven't. I've got two more. So I've decided, I've go decided we're going to go for it because I've got yeah. one that I want to round out the broadcast with, but I feel it would be remiss of me not to try and get this one played while we're still going for it. So uh-huh. I've, this next song is uh, from the early 1980s. It's from the new wave of British heavy metal. And mm. while heavy metal is probably anathema on a punk podcast, it is an inescapable fact that Rights of Hadda is <laughs> enormously influenced by the old new yeah. wave of heavy metal bands. Um, this is one of my favourite of those bands, not least because they, they're in one of those positions where they've got ex-members who are forming splinter groups. 
So this band, uh, who are called okay. Witchfind, uh, actually have a splinter group called Andrew Colton's Give Em Hell. He was formed by the original <laughs> bass player who played on the first album and, and, and EP. So take that as a warning that should you lot ever end up on top of the pops, there will be a rival outfit waiting in the wings. <laughs> um, but I also wanted to choose this song because it's very occult, it's very theatrical, and um, they, I've listened to this album a heck of a lot. Uh, it's been a huge influence on me. So this is Witchfind with their ode to the occult practice of crystal gazing. <laughs>
Well, that was fabulous. I'm really pleased you enjoyed. I, Glorious, I, I, isn't it? It's high camp. I love a bit of employing the falsetto. And I feel like of all the songs that have been played tonight, my wig suited that one the most. Uh, <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I felt it would be a fitting selection for, uh, for, for tonight. Yeah, that was great. Truly delightful. Hails to Witchfind. Yeah, that's great. Is it all like that? Is that their general uh, band? They, no, they're they're quite an odd band. Their first two albums had a bloke on who was a sort of um, bitter drinking Sheffield pub goer. So they've got very, very flat vocals. And then they hired this enormously flamboyant fellow called <laughs> Luther Belts who had the, the falsetto. But he only had it for this one album. Uh-huh. Um, but um, yeah, Witchfind are bags of fun. You know, for, any, uh, for anybody that's kind of interested in, you know, the trials and tribulations relations of being in a band they're one of those bands that lay bare the uh, the realities of the situation uh, there's one song on their second album uh, I think it's got a title called like Big Deal or something like that where they, uh, they're they singing about playing a gig in their local pub and their bass player still being at home watching the telly yeah. so uh, yeah lots to enjoy <laughs> great they're like they're like bad news, but if they had a library <laughs> card and that they discovered that the library's mind, body, and spirit section had like the Satanic Bible, you know, that, that's <laughs> I think the sort of level that we go for with Witchfire. I hope that doesn't sound like I'm slagging them off. I actually really like them. <laughs> no, that was great. I really enjoyed that. Thanks for bringing Excellent. that. I oh, like okay. I like a lot of that. Is that's heavy metal then? Is it? Uh, yes, uh, yes, it is. Yeah, in its purest form. And yeah. as you say, you know, the, the high camp element of it is is what really appeals to me as well. And that, you, you probably haven't di- discerned the lyrics from the first time listened through, but it's wonderful as well. It's so written from the point of view of a teenage boy who's got a crush on a girl and who's looking at his scrying into his mirror to try and uh-huh. look into her bedroom when she's getting uh-huh. 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 <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> okay. well, I've got this is my last official song but then I've got the outro I usually choose an outro Tom which traditionally traditionally is anything well, um, is slightly spiritual or slightly longer oh okay well we'll see how it goes because I've, I've got another I've got one which I thought which I thought of using for my sort of outro from the show um, okay which, well is, is packed with uh, with camp and good fun but we'll, we'll go through this song selection first and then we'll see how we get on well the next song's from Johnny Kowalski and the Sexy Weirdos, who you may recognise the name because we played with them several times at Friend Fest. And they... oh, I, th- I thought when people were shouting Sexy Weirdos, they were just talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, unfortunately, I don't think we even got that. <laughs> <laughs> just just plain old weirdos eh? <laughs> but um so yeah i mean i've been switched on to them for a few years because of friend fest and i dip in and out of their stuff and they've got four albums and they just released the latest one i think it's four anyway you know i'm speaking like i know what i'm talking about but so forgive me if i've got that wrong but the last one they've released um just at the beginning of this lockdown and it is abs- it's an absolute smasher it's got more violin on or the violin's <clears throat> more prominent than um the normal and but it's it's absolutely cracking and there's a song here called flowers for antifa so here we go with uh, johnny kowalski and the sexy weirdos <laughs> Fall in, fall out of line You're doing what they tell you to do 
as if by sick design they're gonna make a fuss to you as if by sick design I saw you just the other day thought you might go the other way in the interests of the play I kept my faithful thoughts away but now so Solid stuff there, huh? What a bass tone. Superb. <laughs> yeah, they're great. And you play a lot of kind of festivals and they're around on that kind of scene and solid anti-fascists. And yeah, we've played with them several times at Friend and I always enjoy they always enjoy their gigs. They're banging. Very much so. Yeah, most enjoyable. So what have you got left then, Tom? So to round us out, I thought I'd flout to the whole business of this being a punk podcast again and go for something which is uh, entirely different in tone. Um, this is a Sheffield-based band. Um, they uh, synth pop, I suppose you describe them as. They're fabulous. They're current, which is, again, another reason Ooh. we've selected them. Um, <laughs> I think you're going to enjoy it. I have a feeling listeners will tune out in their droves and the uh, the podcast will be falling through the floor in terms of the ratings. But Look, Anyone that's still going at this point, you know, it's the... They're with us, aren't they? They're with us, yeah. Okay, so this is, um, yeah, this is the International Teachers of Pop, and this is a delightful ditty called After Dark.
Jesus, that ending was a bit abrupt. It was. I've never heard that ending on the, any edition of it I've heard before. I was literally just zoning out. I was in such a blissful place, <laughs> <laughs> and then my speakers nearly went. <laughs> Alex, have you got have you got a, a keyboard full of novelty sounds at your own? <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> They're going to be like a swanny whistle in a minute. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was lovely. Oh, I'm glad you approve. Oh, Good, honest I, fun, that, isn't I it? I approve wholeheartedly of that shit. I love shit like that. Oh, excellent. Well, in that case, you'll love the entire rest of that band's discography. You know, everything that they've put out so far that I've heard has been along similar lines and just as joyous. I would so, love it. Who are they? I can't they're remember. Called, they're called the International Teachers of Pop. Great name as well. They're, and uh, they're, they're right. In- that, is, that was, you know, that was lovely. And education in pop stuff. And, you know, the next time you guys are up in Sheffield, perhaps you'll, uh, you know, be able to... Well, no, actually, why would you be able to make inroads in them? I don't know. <laughs> well, we might now. Cut that we'll, bit out. We'll, Cut we'll that tag bit them out. in. We've blown a bit of smoke up their ass. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening, the International Teachers of Pop, get in touch. <laughs> anyway, so we come to the end now. We have. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been delightful. It's been thanks. an entire hour and a half of oral delights. Thanks for joining and, uh, us, Tom. And you'll, you'll note I've said the uh, the runtime of the raw recording here so that people will know exactly how much controversial chit-chat has been snipped out in the edit. <laughs> Unless, of course, Alex was to snip out that detail in the edit. Well, I'm about to plant a 10-minute <laughs> song on the end as well, Ooh. so, you know, like... <laughs> but, um, no, it's been absolutely lovely. And um, I've really enjoyed hanging out with you, Tom. It's been too long. I mean, partly that's been because, you know, we're not able to hang out with each other fully. So um, our paths will cross again, most definitely. But so to just to... um, to play out then this is the lost cherries and this is the one of their their my favorite songs of theirs and possibly their least punk song i don't know but um it, it's certainly a departure from what they normally do so most people will know the lost cherries as a seminal and narco punk band that are still playing and jolly lovely people this is a fantastic track thanks for listening everyone so this is the lost cherries and this is peace of my mind peace of my heart glorious Thank you both for having me on the podcast. It's been an absolute delight. And, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, who's tuned in and listened. Um, Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. pockets all the clothes on your back That tells me who you are I don't give a fuck if you're black or white Or if you've travelled far No holiday home or well and break From your high-paid nine to five it's the fire in your belly and a tight clenched fist that proves if you're alive. It's the fire in your belly and a tight clenched fist that proves if you're alive. It's not your level of conversation that tells me about you. And you won't find me counting the push-ups you can do. It's not a tailored wardrobe or a shiny flash new car. But the kicks in the teeth and the knives in the back that makes us who we are. The kicks in the teeth and the knives in the back that makes us who we are. You cut me open, what do you see? A lump of scar tissue where a heart should be. My body weak, my spirit torn Cause I've been fighting for my rights since the day I was born Real life is cruel, real life is tough Sometimes your best is not enough But never run, never don't ever compromise your rights, your hope, your pride. Set out a path, raise the bar. Make your stand, make your mark. Remaining true to who you are. And always free inside your mind and in your heart. A 
unpaired scar tissue where our heart should be. But I am free and I am strong, and my heart beats loud and will my whole life long. You cut me open. What do you see? The lump of scar. Your bed.